Let's get started. And remember, this is all just satire. Hey there, Kotaku's hiring. All right. It's time I got into game journalism. The starting pay is $55,000. Weird timing, but I like to give people a chance to work on applications over this weekend. So, we're also hiring for our staff editor, listing here. Ooh, yeah, it's Los Angeles or New York, New York. Ugh, two places I don't care to be. As always, I strongly encourage you to apply, even if you don't think a person like you would get the job. I think if I applied, Kotaku would implode. <laughs> All right. Let's see what type of hard-hitting journalism we can expect from the Kotaklet. Let's see, what do they expect you to write? Kotaku is actually a dumpster fire for journalism. Here's a classic. Transphobic creator J.K. Rowling not involved in the new Harry Potter game. I guess they had to add the transphobic part because J.K. Rowling's was caught beating a uh, person that was transitioning and then taking their medication. Uh, I have video footage of this. J.K. Rowling was, and I quote, laying the smack down. Trump's America now, boy. It sure is. Oh, I could work at Kotaku, actually. That was good. It's better than what they usually do. A, a case in point. Star Wars Squadron. The Kotaku Review. <laughs> oh, boy. You know it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Now, it looked like a normal review at the beginning until I got to this piece here. Playing as an Imperial pilot is an interesting way to show the other side of the conflict. But Squadrons runs into the same problem prior Star Wars media has. Namely, that these are still space knots. What? What the fuck? I shouldn't be happy when they win, and I really shouldn't and don't like them. I have a feeling that this Kotaku writer, Zach, was probably beaten up at like a Comic Con by a group of like 501st Legion members. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I can understand if there was really like hate groups that were all dressed as stormtroopers and they beat up gay kids. Okay. But it's a movie and a game. None of this is real. That's like me going, I really hate Saiyans. Because they used to take over other planets. And I shouldn't be happy when Goku wins a fight. This is a more complex topic than this review can do justice. But I think Squadron writers tried to really hard to walk a tightrope with its depiction of the Empire. And failed to pull it off. You are a thief of joy. Anybody else? What tightrope? It, it's a video game based on fictional events. Dude. Even when I was playing World War II games, and I preferred to be on, uh, you know, the German side, because let's face it, the MG42 took no prisoners. You can keep the browning. If my team won, I was screaming to the hilt in German. You know? <laughs> can I do that, Stu? Will they allow it? Will they allow it? How often I have rehearsed this moment of destiny in my dreams. The valor we to encapsulate. The unspoken nobility of our comradeship. <laughs> For example, during one mission, the game only forces you and your evil squadrons to destroy a certain number of civilian escape ships, giving you the option to ignore the rest. But you still kill civilians either way. Other times, your Imperial squad mates might voice concern over how terrible everyone's acting during the mission. But they still stick around. And later on, help blow up yet more civilian ships. Sure, your Empire squadrons are diverse with people of color. And a gay pilot. Oh, thank God. Woo! Oh, we dodged a bullet there, Fluffy. Oh my God, Fluffy. I was worried. So they told me Laganja Estranja was in the fucking... <laughs> uh, the game was almost completely terrible until Alyssa Edwards came in. Oh, it also has older people and many women. But just adding diverse faces to the space fascists doesn't change the fact they dress like World War II Nazis.
are racist toward non-humans and are willing to hurt or kill innocent people at the drop of a hat. It's a video game. Oh no. You're telling me they're mean to the Iridorians? Oh no. I can't. Please tell me they're at least nice to the Twi'lek girl. Oh my god. The fascism against non-existent races. I can't take it. Stu. Stu. Get my EpiPen. I need help. I'm over. <laughs> I'm allergic to racism. Oh my god. If you like to avoid squ squadrons ends with two missions, the first one involves your per- You know, I'm done. I, I wouldn't want to work at Kotaku. No, I'm- I'm not filling out my application. I'm not interested. I'd rather pick up pennies from YouTube ad revenue than work in a place where there are literal game journalists who aren't reviewing the game, but complaining about non-issues in a fictional galaxy far, far away. Have we did, did what happened to gaming journalism? I remember back in the days of GamePro, you know what I'm talking about. There's one guy out there who's like, yeah. <laughs> remember when <laughs> game journalism was about the game and not someone's personal politics or personal feelings about something? Like Queen, I'm gonna assume this guy's gay. You're living in America. You're a game journalist. You're living the dream. You have no real hardship, because if you did, this wouldn't matter to you. I'm not reading any more of this. Uh, Sophia Norowitz uh, turned me on to this, actually. I saw a tweet of hers, and I couldn't believe it, so I went to read the entire article. And I was like, okay, this isn't too bad. And then I did stumble apart this, across this part, and I was just like, okay, so this is real. This is actually someone having an issue with a non-issue. And Eddie Van Halen's dead, so welcome to 2020.